James Harden. Oh, guess what happened to James Harden? He got traded. That's what happened. This is Sports Guy talking that you guys are watching and listening to. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about James Harden being traded to the Los Angeles Clippers as he is now on his fourth NBA team since December of 2020. Although James Harden now gets to reunite with Russell Westbrook for a third time, this move certainly raises questions from all parties involved. Even though James Harden is an older player, the 76ers managed to not get all that much in return for James Harden. Before I say anything else though, I want to present you guys with the topic question. So here it is. Who won the trade? Clippers or 76ers? And honestly, I'm going to give a hot take on this trade. I don't think either team really won this trade. I was not impressed with what the Philadelphia 76ers got in return for James Harden. I also was not impressed with what the Los Angeles Clippers gave up to get James Harden in return and the fact that they also have him as well. I predicted back in the summer that the Los Angeles Clippers were going to be the team that traded for James Harden. Well, I was proven to be absolutely correct. And even though they pulled off the trade to get James Harden and they managed to not give up Terrence Mann, I still did not like the deal for the Philadelphia 76ers whatsoever. Why do I not love this deal for them? Because of the fact that every time James Harden joins a team, it always ends up in disaster. Every time that James Harden is playing for an NBA team, he always requests a trade within two years, with the exception of the Houston Rockets, obviously, because he played for them for a long time. But when he first requested a trade from the Houston Rockets, I was like, okay, yeah, that actually makes some sense because they got a new coaching staff. They won't be going in rebuilding mode. Okay, fine. Request a trade. Do what you gotta do. But then he forces a trade to the Brooklyn Nets where he forms a big three with KD and Kyrie, but then he barely plays basketball because he spends the entire time getting hurt game after game after game. And when he did play on the basketball court, oh, now it was KD's turn to miss games where he would get hurt all the time. And then if both guys like KD and Harden were playing on the basketball court, Kyrie Irving would then say, okay, it's my turn to miss games. Let me go ahead and miss it because of injury or because I don't want to get the vaccine shot or whatever. Whatever excuse Kyrie Irving could find, he found it. And then James Harden then said, you know what? Let me go ahead and request a trade. Let me go to the Philadelphia 76ers. And then all of a sudden, oh, now he don't want to play with Joel Embiid no more after a couple of years because of the fact that James Harden was a choker in last year's playoffs and because of the fact that he has beef with people on the Philadelphia 76ers. This guy has problems with Daryl Morey. But my thing with James Harden is, if you had problems with Daryl Morey, why did you agree to force a trade to go work with him again? You already worked with him in Houston. Now, why do you want to work for the Philadelphia 76ers now that Daryl Morey is there? That's the problem with James Harden. Everywhere James Harden goes, he always ends up being a cancer. It's like watching a movie while you know the ending, but you watch it anyways and you watch it three, four straight times even though you already know what the ending to the movie is. That's how I feel when the Los Angeles Clippers trade for James Harden. I understand that the Los Angeles Clippers, they got a lot of good players on the roster, okay? I know that they got Terrence Mann, who they managed to somehow keep in the trade. They got Kawhi Leonard. When he actually plays basketball, he's actually a pretty good player. And then they got Ivisa Zubac. Okay, he's a decent rim protector. And then there's Paul George. Okay, he's a good basketball player when he actually plays basketball games. And then there's James Harden. And then, of course, you got Russell Westbrook, Norman Powell, and P.J. Tucker, and Mason Plumlee. I mean, that's a solid nine-man rotation, at least on paper. Here's the problem, though. Their guys have way too big of an ego to really coexist with one another because now you got four guys on the team that needs the ball in their hands all the time. Kawhi Leonard's going to say, I need to get my shots up or otherwise I got to go ahead and low manage because I want to skip these games in the NBA. And then you got to give the ball to Paul George because Paul George needs to get his numbers in there. And then you also have to deal with Russell Westbrook where although he's gotten a lot better at getting off the ball, he needs the ball in his hands in order to be fully successful. But then if you focus on those three, then James Harden is going to be unhappy that he is sacrificing individual statistics to get regular season wins because James Harden's going to say, let me go ahead and get the basketball myself. I need to get my numbers in there so I could see the whole situation blowing up for the Los Angeles Clippers. And as far as whether or not I see the Los Angeles Clippers doing better than they did last year, I honestly can't see it. I actually did have the Clippers regressing this year compared to last year. But with this trade, okay, now I'm thinking, all right, they're going to be at the same place as last year. They're probably going to get into the playoffs, even though I'm still not fully confident in that. But okay, whatever. They get to the playoffs. Now what? Do you guys really think they're going to beat the Denver Nuggets in the first round? Do you guys really think they're going to beat the Los Angeles Lakers, the Sacramento Kings, the Golden State Warriors, the Phoenix Suns? Do we really think that the Los Angeles Clippers with this current squad are going to go ahead and beat those teams? Hell no. I don't see that happening whatsoever. They got a team filled with choke artists all over the place. Kawhi Leonard, out of all these stars in the NBA for the Los Angeles Clippers, is the only proven winner on this team because Paul George hasn't proven nothing at the big stage. Russell Westbrook chokes come playoff time. And then James Harden, the master of folding when it matters most in the playoffs. I mean, this is a team filled with chokers. This is a team filled with guys past their prime. I don't expect this trade to be very good for the Los Angeles Clippers whatsoever. All these people telling me that the Clippers, oh, now 
now they're going to be so much better now that they have James Harden. Man, stop the lie. James Harden is not going to improve the Los Angeles Clippers all that much. He might marginally improve them, maybe. But here's the thing with James Harden. He's getting fat, he's getting lazy, and he's not a team first player. He is an individual player first. And when you have guys like that in your locker room, especially guys that you didn't draft and develop, that's going to screw up problems in the locker room. And when you have that happening, it's hard to build a winning culture year in and year out. And I understand that when you make a trade for James Harden, you're making a move to win now. But honestly, I don't see how James Harden is going to make the Los Angeles Clippers a title contending team. I could see James Harden helping the Los Angeles Clippers become a playoff team, but I don't see him leading the Los Angeles Clippers to a title. They're not even close to being a tier one team in the Western Conference. They're not nearly as good as what you would think their roster would indicate. So obviously this trade is a loss for the Los Angeles Clippers. Now let's go ahead and focus on the Philadelphia 76ers because I wasn't really impressed with what they got in return. I mean, yeah, they got some nice pieces back in return, but the players that they got in return, I was like, really? That's all you're going to get for James Harden? I mean, Marcus Morris? I mean, he's all right. Nick Batum? Okay, he's trash, even though he's gotten better in the Los Angeles Clippers, but when he was on the Hornets, he was absolute garbage. Then they got Robert Covington. Okay, yeah, he's a nice 3 and D player. And then they get KJ Martin. Okay, that's a rotational piece that you could use off the bench, but the picks, the draft picks that they got in return for James Harden, that was what really impressed me. However, here's the problem with these draft picks. Those draft picks are not going to help out the Philadelphia 76ers all that much because their first round picks are not going to be coming in until the 2026 NBA draft. That's still quite a ways away. Now, granted, they did get two first round picks in return for James Harden. They get the protected first round pick via OKC. That was what they acquired in the Paul George deal pick swap or whatever the deal is. So basically, in other words, they're getting a first round pick from the Clippers that the Clippers originally owned in 2026. Other than they get an unprotected first round pick from the Los Angeles Clippers in 2028. I think that is fairly simple to understand, so I'm not going to expand any further of that. Other than they get a first round pick swap in 2029. Okay, so they're basically trading spots with each other. I think you guys understand that as well. Other than they get two future second round picks in 2024 and 2029. Now, when you look at it like that, they're getting decent draft picks in return for James Harden, but they're not getting multiple first round picks. And even though I've been trashing James Harden for being a choker come playoff time, he is a top player in the NBA. He is one of the top players that have ever played the game of basketball. He's a top 75 player for sure. So obviously, you would have obviously wanted to get more than one first round pick in return that you could have basically guaranteed. But hey, I guess something is better than nothing. And considering the fact that James Harden has forced his way out of teams more often than not, okay, the fact that you managed to actually get something decent in return for the long term, okay, I guess I can take that. Although they didn't get Terrence Mann, they didn't necessarily get better right now. I mean, I guess they're getting better by addition, by subtraction, because James Harden is out of the equation and they don't necessarily need James Harden because they already got a nice one two punch in Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey, which, by the way, Tyrese Maxey, he needs to be in the running for most improved player of the year. I believe that he's going to win most improved player at the end of the season. That's how high I am on Tyrese Maxey. I think the Philadelphia 76ers, the players that they got in return, they're not necessarily going to make them better, but it's going to be addition by subtraction by getting rid of James Harden. And who knows, maybe those players that they got in return for James Harden turn out to be solid rotational pieces. I mean, let's see what's going to happen. I mean, of course, the Oklahoma City Thunder, they facilitated a third team trade. Their part in the deal was basically a 2027 pick swap with the Clippers. So it's just nothing more than a formality with them. So honestly, when you look at all this in terms of grades, I got to give the Philadelphia 76ers a C plus. I mean, it's not a terrible trade that they pulled off for James Harden. I just don't think that this trade is going to be all that impactful for them. And the valuable things that he got in return for James Harden is not going to help him for another two to three years. So that's going to be a long time down the road. Joel and B might not even be on the Philadelphia 76ers by then. I think if you're the Los Angeles Clippers, I felt pretty underwhelmed by this move. Yes, you stack up all that talent. Yes, you stack up all those chips on the table and you get James Harden in return. But we already know how the movie's going to end. We already know that James Harden is going to eventually force his way out of the Los Angeles Clippers one way or another. So I got to give that a C minus. I obviously was not impressed with what the Clippers did in terms of getting James Harden. That team is not getting anywhere past the first round. I don't see that happening. I think if you're the Oklahoma City Thunder, you got to feel pretty good about that trade. I mean, obviously, they're not really involved in the trade. They're more of a third team facilitator, but I'm giving them an A for the trade. Although it's way very little, it's kind of like a homework assignment that they completed. Obviously, if you're the Oklahoma City Thunder, you got to feel pretty good about the deal, but they didn't really play a big part in this deal, so I can't really declare them as the true winners of this trade. I'm going to declare the Philadelphia 76ers as the winner of the James Harden trade. Although they didn't really win the deal, it's just more like they didn't lose the deal compared to the Los Angeles Clippers. This is addition by subtraction. I like that the 76ers were able to dump James Harden. That dude is a cancer in the locker room. So that's why the 76ers won the trade, even though I am not really impressed with what they got in return for James Harden.
remember go ahead and subscribe to sports guy talking like the video and please comment down below if you guys do that i may shout you guys out in my instagram story every monday that will be for the at dustin s tran instagram account make sure to follow me on instagram at dustin s tran and at sports guy talking also go follow me on twitter at dustin s tran again go ahead and do those things that i just told you guys to go do hopefully you guys enjoyed the content that was just produced peace out i hope you enjoyed that video want more sports guy talking the home of great sports content make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from sports guy talking go ahead and like the video comment down below check the description box on the video in order to follow my instagram and twitter also be sure to check out more of the best clips from the youtube channel sports guy talking